Hey guys, I guess by now you've heard Transact Card has a new banking partner. But what does that truly mean? How did this transpire? How did, how did an Australian businessman living in Utah find one of the largest mutual banks in Maine, seven billion in assets, to team up with his network marketing company? At the end of the day, that is the question. And that's what we're going to uncover in this video. Hi, my name is Troy Dooley. I'm the Beachside CEO. We've been covering Transact Card for the last few months because I find it intriguing. I find the, the usage of, of real estate REITs, the, the usage of franchising, the usage of banking and network marketing all tied into one, a very intriguing possibility. Can this company actually come through and launch in a way that will transform network marketing and maybe revolutionize banking, franchise, investing as a whole? Those are the questions that we hope to uncover. But lately, they've been without a banking partner. If you listen to some of the propaganda, they say, well, we, we got rid of our bank because they couldn't handle what we, what we were going to bring to them. Maybe that is true. But now they've teamed up with a new small bank. This bank has $7 billion in assets, but that's very small, very large for a mutual bank. But what exactly is a mutual bank? This bank is called Banger Savings Bank. It's owned by Banger Bank Shares MHC. MHC stands for Mutual Holding Corporation or Company. Uh, and back in the turn of the century, the 20, 20th century, this was a pretty big deal. Today in the 21st century, there's very, very few of these around anymore compared to what they were. It's just like mutual insurance companies. They just don't exist as much. I think probably because people would rather go out there and raise funds and, and get some stuff done. Part of the propaganda that is being brought out by Transact is because everyone is going to be a depositor in the bank. That makes you a member of the bank, an owner of the bank, if you will. Sounds good, especially if you're going after the unbanked, people that do not understand financial services. That sounds really good. It looks really good when you say, well, now I'm a digital bank owner. I'm a member of the bank. I actually own part of the bank. It's a perfect narrative. I, I commend them from the marketing standpoint. But being an owner in a mutual bank just means that you have the account there, you have your deposits there, and you get to earn interest on those from the profits that the bank makes. You have no ability to make decisions in the bank, you have no to, uh, ability to vote on if the, if the uh, officers or the board of directors are doing it right or doing it wrong. Now, I do want to say this company has a stellar board of directors. We're going to be listing these uh, directors in the actual article because it's like, man, when you go and you see who they are, I don't believe this decision to team up with Transact Card was made lightly. I believe this is something that they went to and they looked at it. But how? How can an Australian-born businessman living in Utah find a bank in one of the smallest states in the union to team up with his network marketing company? That's the question. And I believe we've got to go all the way back to 2011 when, when Peter and Ken Rancy actually landed on the shores of America. You got to remember, they came from Australia where they had had a great success in working uh, their marketing and all that good stuff into the banking industry. Lots of people deposited funds in the customers that they had working for them. So it's, they come over here and they get started and somewhere along the line, the odds are that they met Bob Montgomery Rice, who's the president and, and CEO of Banger, and they built a relationship. I would say this probably started all the way back when they started uh, with, uh, I believe his name was Terry, uh, uh, Mick Webb. I can't totally pronounce his name and I apologize for that. Uh, but he was a big time regulator, bank regulator and trustee over in New Jersey. They teamed up with him and he started to teach them how it was in America, just like in Australia. You know, in Australia, you have a, a, a big riff in Australia. You have the Aborigines and then you have what, what they would call the normalized Australians there, which they all came from a penal colony that started in Ireland. My family was there, so I kind of get that. But 
over the centuries, that, that divide is still there today. I, I study a lot of, of Australian uh, politics and their laws because we have clients over there. And, and it's amazing to see the discrepancy in what gets to, gets to go on. So I honestly believe that the, that the Renzi brothers, that excited them because they are Latter-day Saints. Their passion, their purpose in the church as, as, as members of the church is to, is to help the underprivileged, to, to help those that in some cases can't help themselves. So I believe this really does click with where their values are. So when you, when you fast forward this a little bit, you realize that this relationship is being built. All of a sudden, these guys had, had come over here, they'd had great success in Australia, and they wanted to come in and try to figure out a way to help the unbanked or the, or the underbanked, if you will. And for you that may not understand that, or you may look at it and say, well, does that mean they got a bad credit score? The, the odds are, yeah, they probably do have a bad credit score or no credit score at all. And the odds are there's some minority that have, have come in here. Maybe they've been born here. Maybe they've been born in poverty. Uh, maybe they serve time as felons in prison. Maybe they're a single mom, a single dad. Uh, they've just gone through some bad situations. It could be anything when you get right down to it and you look at it. But clear back to the, the, the REV card, I think is how they said, R-E-E-V. Uh, you can see where these guys were excited to create something, to do something. And it didn't work out there. We see where um, Peter launched uh, one of the film uh, film studios because he wanted to to bring values into the home. So I, I bring this up to say, with his background in entertainment, his background in marketing and advertising, and their background in banking, they came to America to try to make something happen. And when they were able to team up with Mickey Webb. Uh, they were able to learn that there is a need in America. The question is, does Transact Card fill that need? The, the other question is, is it a need at all or is it something that there's no way to fix? I don't have those answers, but I believe when we look at the banking industry, when we look at the mortgage industry, uh, when we look at financial services, that there seems to be an answer there. But at the same time, when you go over and you study a man like uh, Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey his client base is the same exact client base as Transact Card. It's those that are upside down in debt. It's those that are frustrated because they don't have the same ability that they believe other people have in the financial industry space. And that's what brings us to the Transact Card that we see today. And I believe that, that their focus is 100% to grab this giant, giant base, maybe the majority of Americans, if you will, and say, look, we want to provide you with the ability. The question is, are they doing it in an ethical manner? And I think that 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 is the question a lot of people ask. You, you launch something, it looks like you're kind of crowdfunding it. You throw all these databases together, but yet nobody's really done KYC, so that screws it up. You've got all these third-party systems you're trying to put in here together to make this work, to fulfill the vision which again, if, if this is truly their vision, if, if, if this isn't some scepterfuge where they're just using this, but they're, they're just trying to make money on the back end, which is what the critics say, then this is an admirable endeavor. But during the process, there's a lot of cleanup that's taking place and therein lies more ammunition, more fuel for outside critics, to, me too for that matter. You know, you, you, you start out with Richard Smith, who has a checkered background. Um, at least it, it does when you look at the eye of banking and, and regulators and wanting a prestige background. So all of a sudden he's moved from corporate office out into the field. Um, you, you don't like your compliance officer that you have in the company, even though she is called the queen of compliance and direct sales. You need somebody that has a more diverse background. So you hire a, a very prestigious uh, a fintech compliance person to come in and they start cleaning house then all of a sudden you you bring in a new coo and it, it from from what we're seeing now bill andrioli and his team are out so is the transact card of 2021 actually the transact card of 2023 
and I don't believe that it is. I do believe that when they get done, it won't even look like a network marketing or direct selling company. And the reason I say that is because in this, this latest updates that we're seeing coming out from corporate, they brought the word franchising back into the narrative. A couple months ago, they were saying, don't talk about franchising. We're not franchising. That won't be until in the future. We may not be franchising. We're going to go education. We're bringing in D.L. Wallace to, to, to have all these training and education for us. And now it looks like they're starting to pivot back to their initial vision. Now, you may say, Troy, this video has covered a lot. That's how convoluted right now and, and seeming from the outside discombobulated Transact Card is. In reality, I don't think that, that Peter Rancy has changed from his original vision. Everything that I have gone and looked at from Australia to America, what, what I've found that, that seems to be 100% the same as it was in the old days as it is now is that he lives his life based on LDS, Latter-day Saints, principles and values. And that what he's trying to do is fulfill a mission that, that, that he believes is part of his calling in his church. And that is to go and help the underprivileged. The question is, can you do that utilizing this model with a network marketing compensation plan? Will it become more focused on the opportunity? Will it become more focused on your client base? Will it, will it actually merge together? Will they be able to bring products and services in here that will have a fair market value to the end consumer? And then the big question is, if they truly are going after an underserved or or a, a, a no served demographic in America, will the large banks allow them to do that? Will large banks internationally in other countries allow them to do that? Will MasterCard and Visa be able to allow them to do that knowing that the, that the uh, analysis and, and where they've got to have ratios, if you have too many people that can't pay the bills, then your companies go upside down. And I'm not sure with the actuary tables if any of these companies are going to want to allow that. Those are the questions. So if you're looking at Transact Card, if you're in Transact Card, go in eyes wide open. Go in realizing I've not been able to find one company yet that has done this. There's a lot of companies that have tried to do this that haven't. And the closest company, and he has no ties to anything, would be Dave Ramsey telling poor people and, and under, underbanked people how they can become millionaires. That's the closest thing that I have found to the Transact Card story. But again, something that we should think about. Even Dave Ramsey has multi-million dollar lawsuits against him. So will this company too end up with multi-million dollar lawsuits against them when people don't fulfill the steps needed to become financially free, to become a bank owner, to, to buy stuff at a, at a large discount and yet see their lifestyle change at home. Because if people at home are still in debt, if people at home still can't pay their bills, if people at home still have medical issues, if people at home are still fighting emotional and mental issues, they're gonna find somebody to blame. And the question is, will Transact Card have deep enough pockets and be able to sustain themselves without regulatory interference, without legal interference, to fulfill the mission that, that it seems like Peter Rancy, Richard Smith, and some of the others that were on the original team, that vision that they have. I don't know that. I would not join Transact Card at this stage of the game, and I'm a pretty risky individual. We, crypto to startup companies. We, we invest in a lot of stuff. This is one that I'm watching. Great friends at corporate, great friends in the field. I want to see them have the success they're looking for. But as an outside advocate for Main Street entrepreneurs, 
I'm just not sure with this one, but we're going to continue to cover it. We're going to continue to give you the good, the good stuff that's happening, a new banking partner, but we're also going to raise those questions that you need to be thinking about if you're going to put your family's fortune or your family's potential fortune behind this company. So live life like it's an epic adventure. Have a phenomenal Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever holiday you're celebrating. Enjoy that. And always remember this. Always look forward into where you're going. Don't always stay where you've been. We'll see you next time.